Hello, folks. Welcome to the Manly Pinterest Tip Show. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. Today's show is sponsored by MyPinterestBootCamp.com. Now, Cynthia Sanchez and I have teamed up, and we're offering a free Pinterest training right before Social Media Marketing World on Wednesday at 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So go to MyPinterestBootCamp.com slash free training. That's MyPinterestBootCamp.com slash free training to sign up and reserve your spot. I've got one of my favorite guests here on the show today, Dustin Stout, the man, the myth, the legend. Dustin is the chief marketing officer for Wheel Media. He's a web designer, branding enthusiast, blogger, and social media junkie. Dustin, thanks for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me, Jeff, on your manly Pinterest show. That's right. You've got to talk like that the rest of the time. <laughs> I just feel like I need to, I need to you know... Support flex. my voice a little more when I'm on the Manly Pinterest show. Just stay flexed the entire time. So, <laughs> full flex. Um, <laughs> hey, I appreciate everybody who's stopping by today. Um, if you have, any of you in your, uh, the live audience has any questions, make sure to ask your questions in the comment, and we will try to get Dustin and I to answer those for you during the show today. Um, now, Dustin, before you know, we're going to talk about creating pinnable images today. Um, but before we get started on that road. Um, some people who may not be familiar with you who are listening and watching today, can you kind of give them a little bit of background about yourself and then how you came to be uh, on social media? Sure. I, uh, you know, like many people in the social media space currently, uh, I didn't really start out uh, wanting to be a social media expert or a or even a blogger. I, I was just a guy pursuing the the film and television industry. I'm an actor by by trade, I, I, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm an actor. I moved out to Hollywood for um, you know the purpose of pursuing an acting career. Went to a very prestigious acting conservatory uh, and graduated. And like many actors in California, I realized very quickly that. Celebrities are the ones who act, and actors are the ones who wait tables. And I didn't really like waiting tables very much, so I had to find a real job. And uh, that led me to doing uh, some youth ministry for my church, and long story short, wanted to make a website for our youth ministry, which led me into finding out about blogging through a guy named John Saddington. Got my first WordPress site started, and I'm the kind of person that when I learn something, I have to like learn everything about it. Uh, I just I like to dig deep, and um, before too long, I knew how to build WordPress sites. I was using a, a custom theme, and somebody noticed uh, that it looked really good, and uh, my good friend Dale Penn, who's still a client of mine today, uh, he was my first client. He said, hey, I noticed your, your blog looks really good. Um, could you maybe do my blog too? And I thought, yeah, I guess I could do that. <laughs> uh, and then he asked me, well, how much would you charge? And I thought, well, that's a novel idea too. Get paid to do that? I, I can do that. So I also had a very keen interest in Twitter at the time and, and Facebook, and I just kind of got that stuff. You know, it, it made sense to me, and I was able to easily navigate it and figure out all the nuances. And so. Uh, slowly but surely, just started blogging about uh, what I was learning, and I started teaching people about it. And before too long, more people were wanting to hire me, and more people were visiting my blog and, and subscribing to my newsletter. And you know, here I am today, just doing what I I, I love, being social, uh, playing with new shiny things, and and teaching people, which is my real passion. My real passion is 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 teaching and and sharing, uh, because as an actor, one. One thing that drives us as actors is not is not the spotlight. It's not the fame oh, for us real actors, <laughs> uh, whatever that means. Uh, it's it's the storytelling. We love telling stories and seeing people's faces light up and taking people through a range of emotions and 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 just connecting with them at that that narrative level, which I think in in each of us is built this desire for story and for narrative and Don Miller talks about this a lot um, so that's what I love and being able to teach uh, people how to do things to improve their lives or to take them through a story and and you know make them come out on the other side going man that was really cool or man that was a lot of fun or gosh that's interesting 
um, and moving people into action. That's really something that I love. And so I do that. I work from home. You might have heard a crying baby in the background. Um, uh, living in beautiful Southern California, not too many people have that uh, luxury of not having to commute four hours to their job. Um, I commute about four seconds up this little stairway here uh, into my loft, and um, I'm just truly blessed. That's awesome. The one of the questions I do want to ask you is your design. Um, you know, because you design so much stuff. I mean, you're a, you're a web designer, but you're also uh, your graphics, which we're going to be talking about today. You know, are are spectacular. Are you all self-taught with that? Um, did you just grab Photoshop one day and said, "I'm going to learn it myself"? I mean, kind of. Yeah. How, how did that start? Is that what you did? Pretty much. I was, uh, you know, I was interested in design. I've always been an artist in many forms. When I was a when I was a kid, I was always sketching and drawing comic books. Uh, I loved art. I was never very good at painting, but I, I really had an appreciation for art. So um, I picked up on artsy things really easily. And uh, my my art teacher, one of my art teachers in high school, would always let me. He he would give me free passes during study hall to come hang out in his office, and he had Photoshop, and so I'd play around with it, create some you know stupid things, um, and that's kind of where I got started on Photoshop. And then I started working in youth ministry, and you know part of web design is graphic design, a big part of that. And so I started playing with Photoshop a little bit more, and uh, you know just taught myself how to do everything um, and uh, yeah yeah I mean there's it, well, it's interesting to say self-taught because on the internet you can learn anything you can get a college degree on the internet just by watching YouTube videos and that's I mean I, I just literally looked for every resources I could and and just devoured it as best I could so self-taught but a little help from my internet friends that's right well that's, I think that gives people you know a lot of times people think, oh, he must have gone to a design school or whatever. Nope. So there's, I mean, and this, <laughs> everything I have done pretty much online is, and with my business, is self-taught. I mean, I've taken mm -hmm. some classes, but they're all online. I mean, so if, if people are really wanting to become a better designer, a better web designer, a better writer, there's tons of free tools Oh yeah, that you and can that's, learn. From. That's one of the big things I teach, too. In all my articles about visual content, I always end it with, just, just go do it. Go play with it. Like, go play with Photoshop. Go play with Canva. Go play with GIMP. Do something because the only way you get better at that stuff is to actually do it and start it. And and you have to understand that it's gonna suck. <laughs> it's gonna be bad at first, but that's part of the growing process. For even for me, I, I look back at some of my early Photoshop stuff. I'm like. That's retarded. Like that's oh, like it doesn't even make sense. Uh, like why? What was I create? Is so ugly. Um, but you know, uh, it's it's part of the process, and and you 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 can only get better uh, the more that you practice. Practice makes. I hate the word perfect, but practice makes more better. <laughs> more better. <laughs> well, here's uh, here's a uh, my friend Elisa uh, says. Dustin Stout, me too. So many generous people willing to share information. And uh, and we're just leads right into the next question, which is great, um, because I think it has a lot to do with it. But why did you really go with Google Plus? Um, why was what was the initial traction for you? Because you are really as your that's where I met you was on Google mm -hmm. Plus because you have a huge following and you teach on there and you hang out. Um, so what was the initial traction for you for Google Plus? Well, Google Plus came around at a time where I was in love with Twitter. Twitter was, you know, the hot new deal. Really loved it. Facebook was really uh, starting its decline as far as uh, how how happy people were with it. it. It had kind of missed its heyday, where people were super excited. I was fr frankly burnt out on Facebook, and you know, as much as I loved Twitter. It didn't allow for me as a designer, somebody who creates visuals a lot, to showcase my gifts and my talents and, and my passions. At the time, uh, sharing images on Twitter just wasn't where it is today. So you know, I was really looking for a more visual platform, a, a more media-rich platform, because my brand, Dustin.tv, you know, the .tv domain kind of has that assumption of a, a more media-rich personality or brand or website and so I needed a way to showcase you know what I was really good at and that's visuals and so Google Plus came along and it was um, it was not 
it was like Facebook in that it allowed you to share various types of, of media, not just 140 character posts. You can make long form posts. And so the, the, the tools given were, were very attractive. Plus, the, the thing about Twitter that was so great was the search, right? It had hashtags, and it allowed you to find relevant uh, conversations and people that were already happening and helped you to meet new people. And that was extremely attractive to me because who's better at search than Google? Right. right. Who's better at discovery than Google? Nobody. Not a single person. Uh, not even a single company or group of people. Google is the king of search and discovery. So I got that right away. I understand what they were doing with Google+, and it, it made absolute sense. It just clicked. And to me, Google+, when it first came out, was sort of like if Facebook and Twitter had a baby. Um, it, was, it, it had similar features, crossover features, like hashtags and search, and then the rich media posts from Facebook. But it was like five years ahead in technology. Right. Um, then you know Hangouts came out, the the video chat, which I already used, uh, you know Google Chat back in the day. Uh, video Hangouts came out, and then people started using them. You can have up to ten people at once, which at the time was unheard of. Uh, I mean that to me just showcased a platform that was ready for growth, and optimized and primed for growth, and and being able to showcase my specific skills as a designer on a whole new level and get it discovered on a whole new level with you know the tie into Google search um, and on top of that you know lastly I can go on about this all day Jeff so you'll have to stop me <laughs> okay um, but lastly you know images in particular which were my emphasis looked better on Google Plus at the time Facebook when you uploaded a, an image to Facebook it looked like garbage I yeah. mean it was just the quality was deteriorated on Google Plus that didn't happen photos actually looked better on Google Plus than they did on my devices, right? Uh, so that was a that was a huge thing for me as well. So uh, let's go into that because you touched on it there with the uh, how much how better it looked on Google Plus. So what is your overall design <laughs> philosophy and and to you what makes a good image? Not just your images, but when you say something, go okay, that's a good image. That's something I want to try to do. Or so kind of give us your little your philosophy on design. To me. The, the point of an image is to communicate a message, plain and simple. The, the only reason you share a, a visual, even a photograph, is to communicate a, a message. But the benefit of a visual is that you can tie it into emotions. You can tie it into context. So a, a piece of visual content is a, is a, a message with context and emotion. Whereas text, as we know, by itself on the internet, is very easy to misinterpret. <laughs> you, right, can't, right, right. you can't hear someone's tone. You can't hear their emphasis. You can't, uh, you, know, you, you can't hear how they're delivering it. And a lot of times it's easy to pull out a context. We know that with uh, you know, all these Google employee interviews that are, people are pulling them out of context and saying Google is dead because they don't know the context. Well, with a visual, you can add a photograph or some graphics and colors that enhance both the emotional value, the mood of the piece, and give context to what's being communicated. So it, it's a layered uh, benefit, but the ultimate simple benefit is you're communicating a message. Gotcha. So like when you... Let's, let's go real with this. Um, so you're, you create great blog posts and you, you have a great newsletter that you share that stuff with that comes out to, to people and we'll put the link in the comments there uh, for people who want to get a hold of you in the newsletter um, but how many times do you put an image up and go that's ah, not what I'm trying to communicate I gotta try something else I mean do you, do you swap things out and really study how that's going to communicate in that blog post or do you know from when you're writing that article okay I already know what's going to go there it's already in my mind I'm just going to slap it up there and be done with it yeah, well, to be honest, at the volume that I have to produce them on a daily basis, I, I've gotten so used to just doing it that um, you know it's it's a fairly quick process for me. For the more hefty blog posts, um, trying to think, well, a great one is this this one I just did for Google Plus, uh, the Google Plus logos and icons. Right, uh, right. 
I gave away for free. You know, something like that, it's, it's easy, but it's hard because it's a very specific image that I needed to create, but at the same time, it's, it's easy in that I really know the subject matter is very specific. So, um, you know, it's very technical. So a lot of times I'll have in my mind what the emotion or what the context is or what the visual tie-in is, and, you know, I'm, I'm easy to, to recreate that, especially with my own brand because I talk about a limited number of topics, social media and creativity. And, you know, the, the visual cues and, and, and items that sort of tie into that are very similar. And you get used to that and you get better and better and better at it. But when it comes to clients, sometimes I'll have to spend a little bit more time searching for a right photograph or background image to, um, you know, to really connect the message to the... To the visual. Gotcha. So it, it depends, but if you have a set brand, a set identity, and you know exactly the audience that you're serving, it gets much easier the more you do it. Exactly. And it takes a while to go. I mean, I still tweak stuff, but I know that mine is retro kind of styling. And so mm -hmm. once I got that dialed in, it's a lot easier than trying to figure out what yeah. I'm doing for this image. And so, right. Yeah, really and that's cool. why I'm really heavy on branding. Branding is one of those things that I. I always start with. You have to lead with branding and knowing who you are and who you serve. And if you have uh, a, a definite style guide in place or a, a brand branding guideline in place, it's, it's much easier to create visuals that are consistent with that message. And when you're consistent with the message, people can connect to it much faster, quicker, and um, you know, it, it just makes the whole process better. Gotcha. Um, let's let's unlock the Dustin Stout secret vault for a little bit. And where where do you go to get inspired for your images? I mean, I know most all artists have a place where they go and and have their own little kind of treasure trove that they kind of dive back into every once in a while. So where do you go to get insp inspired for creating new stuff? Well, that's actually not a secret. I I created a blog post a year ago of the top 17 places where I go to find photos and and visuals. Um, so I, I put all that out there, but truth be told, there's probably only about three or four on that list that I actually go to on a daily basis. And that is uh, MoPhoto, M-O-P-H-O dot T-O. Uh, by far my favorite place at the moment to find visuals and, and to get inspiration. For me as a creative person, we all have different things that feed our creativity and that inspire us. I'm, I'm inspired by photography. That's, that's kind of my thing. I, I, I'll browse through Flickr or 500 Pixels or, or MoPhoto or any of these sites. If I'm like, if I need a creative jump start, I'll just start w looking at great photography from people like Trey Radcliffe or uh, Thomas Hawk. Photography lights up my creativity. So that's why these photo sites are so important to me, not just for getting visuals, but for getting inspired and sparking my creativity. So MoPhoto is a, is a place, it's actually run by a good friend of mine, uh, Jonathan Malm. And uh, it's a great place. Uh, Thomas Hanna, good buddy of mine, he runs blogphoto.tv. I go there for inspiration and uh, also for photos. Uh, his newsletter, he gives out an exclusive set of photos every week too, and, and those are really uh, helpful. And I also, I, I follow a lot of visual people, um, not just photographers, uh, but also you know, people like Donna Moritz or even... Uh, you know, Peg Fitzpatrick and Rebecca Radice, friends of mine, um, these people who are creating visuals, it's almost like you, you have to surround yourself with like-minded people. Um, the, you know, an old proverb uh, says that uh, you become the five people that you spend the most time with. And, right. uh, you know, they say good company or, or bad company corrupts good character. So, you know, I try to take the opposite approach. I, I get good company and it in, in theory, should help uh, should help good character. Well, um, 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 oh, there's Peg right now. Uh, yeah. Yes, Peg, I'm talking about how awesome Pinterest is and how awesome you are. That's right, because you know, she wants us to get talking about Pinterest, so let's do that. Because um, we could talk about design and, and philosophy yeah. behind design all day, but um, I wanted to add, you know, you kind of were a late adopter and and on Pinterest initially, which, you know, it's, it's kind of strange because one, you're a guy and we're visual, and yeah. two, um, 
you create these great images, and you'd think that you'd just be jumping to Pinterest. Why were you so <laughs> Why were you so resistant to Pinterest at first? Well, here's why, and I, I wrote about this recently too, uh, to my detriment a bit. I I was so infatuated with Google Plus at the time when Pinterest started getting popular. All of a sudden, my wife starts telling me about this thing that her girlfriends are using called Pinterest. And immediately to me, my wife's not a social media girl. She's a pen and paper kind of gal. She loves tangible. She likes physical calendars. Like she's an artsy person that likes tangible art. So when it comes to digital, it's like mm, she's not really interested in that stuff. But she was interested in this. So I'm thinking, oh, it's probably like a girl thing, like a website for women to, you know, to share recipes and and whatnot. So I didn't I didn't, I didn't pay much attention because I didn't really get it. And then my friend Jeremy Smith started telling me about Pinterest and I started hearing these, seeing these articles written and you know it started to gain a lot of popularity and I'm going, well, I'm, I'm looking at my analytics and looking at Pinterest and seeing I'm not getting a lot of traffic from Pinterest so it can't be that huge. <laughs> you know, the biggest fallacy of all time uh, when I criticize Google Plus you know, naysayers about. So I didn't pay attention. And there was also probably that little part of me that, that saw Pinterest as a visual platform and I wasn't getting you know any good traffic from it going why well, create good visuals why why am I not getting more traffic from there so it was a little bit of pride sprinkled in with a little bit of uh, you know just not being aware but uh, you know thank goodness I, I had people like Peg Fitzpatrick speak truth into my life <laughs> and uh, and I started to explore gotcha so, you know, now I know you're you're investing more time in Pinterest. Oh yeah, and you're you're now spending time. You know, why are you? What made you change your mind? Uh, I mean, you listened to Peg, and you know that should be enough reason right there. Should be enough. Should be enough. But um, why are you spending? I I mean, I see you over there quite a bit now. So. Yeah. Is it working for you? Kind of give us a little background on why you yeah, started. Yeah, I would say it's working. So because I was kind of frustrated with my lack of success on Pinterest, and I did see you know, friends of mine using it and having success, I, I decided to test it. I said, okay, I'm going to invest some more time over here. I'm going to figure out what works, and I'm going to see if I can make it work for me. At the time, Pinterest traffic to Dustin.tv was a measly 3% of social referrals. So just looking at social network traffic that I was getting, Google Plus was far more than 50% of the traffic I was getting. So to me, I really didn't need to focus elsewhere. Twitter was, I think, second place and Facebook was, Twitter and Facebook kind of switch places every, every month or so. And Pinterest was just barely a blip on the radar. So I thought, all right, I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to make it happen. So, uh, I knew that visuals did well, and thanks to Peg, I knew that a certain type of visual, the portrait, taller images, do better on Pinterest. So I, I got an optimal size from, from her and just studying the Pinterest user interface, and I started creating a Pinterest-specific image for every single blog post I write. So I created a, a horizontal image and, uh, and a vertical image for every blog post, but my, my little trick was that I didn't want to have to put that vertical image on the web page right. because it, you know, you you can do that, but if you know if you're on a blog that has like a has a sidebar and then the column is this big and then you try to shove a tall graphic in there and then the the text ends up being it, it's bad reading experience. So I had my buddy Nick, uh, who was working on a social sharing plugin uh, with me. We we had this idea for a social sharing plugin called Social Warfare. And we were developing it at the time, and it was in early, early beta. One of the features I, I had him develop was the ability to declare uh, on the back end of WordPress a Pinterest-specific image so that I didn't have to put it on the page, but when the person hit the Pinterest button, that image would automatically come up for them. I started doing that, and literally in the first month of using that, that plugin and that feature, my Pinterest traffic spiked 300%. And, so, is, uh, so is Pinterest now your number one? Yeah. A year later, my Pinterest traffic, and I again, I just wrote about this, my Pinterest traffic is up 1,937% from last year. <laughs> it is now the number one social traffic refer. I think I checked last night. It is close to 60% of the social traffic that I'm getting so uh, you actually need to change that sign behind you. 
I know, right? <laughs> interest the biggest uh, <laughs> thing on there. I take that Google Plus and shrink it down with well, it. You can see Pinterest is almost uh, yeah. yesterday. It's it's like the second biggest one up there. Exactly, like, exactly. Um, so let, I want to talk more about that plugin, but I want to do that a little bit later. I want to talk about right now. Um, you mentioned the perfect size, um, and you mentioned this in your blog post too. And I know it's it's the same ratio peg use. Um, what is that? Is it the 735 by 1102? Is that the one you go by? The the size that I go by is, uh, yeah. Peg's admitting that she harassed me. Yeah. Uh, the size that I go by is 735 by 1102, and I actually created a template uh, that, that I can easily access every time and and recreate that every time. The reason for that dimension is uh, it has a, it's a certain aspect ratio. It's actually very close to the aspect ratios that I create for my wide images, so it's kind of just flipped 90 degrees. But the 735 is dictated by Pinterest. Whenever you click on a pin, the largest it will ever appear is 735 pixels wide, and I've tested this on a number of different browser sizes. The largest it will ever be is 735 in Pinterest's current layout. So uh, to me, I want to create things, visuals in particular, as big as they can be so that they never have to scale up. If anything, they'll just be scaled down. When it comes to images on the internet, when, when you uh, create it, if it ever has to be made bigger than it actually is, you lose, you lose quality. Uh, the visual quality is deteriorated. You get pixelation, you know, kind of like uh, one of those old school 8-bit video games. You know, the, the quality just gets deteriorated. And for me, quality is of the utmost importance. One of my mantras is that quality communicates value. Quality communicates value. So the higher quality, the higher the value you're communicating. So for me, create it as, as big as possible, 735 wide, and then the aspect ratio, you know, that that uh, helped me to figure out the, the 1102. Gotcha. Um, one of the things, okay, we got the we got the dimensions down right for Pinterest, the best way across platforms. So for a company, let's say you're a small business, what's the best way to brand yourself on Pinterest? You just don't all of a sudden start, you know, making this ratio and everything works for you. Is there specific things that you think about when, okay, I'm branding myself a little bit different on Pinterest than I am on, you know, my blog posts? I mean, how does that carry through to the different platforms? Well, being a big fan of branding in particular and a big stickler on, on branding, I think that it always starts with, you know, who who you are, who you serve. So who you are is is sort of the easy part. Who you serve is the harder part. So no matter what the social platform, you have to understand the audience that you're going after. And you, and then you have to make decisions on what it is you're going to share, uh, what it is you're going to promote and produce, and make that consistent across the board. So I don't do anything different on Pinterest that I would do on you know, Instagram or Google Plus. I share less on certain platforms of certain things. Um, and, and Pinterest in particular, Pinterest is a community that is all about sharing uh, from other people. Uh, the, the majority of activity that happens on Pinterest is is repinning of other people. And that's that's the the success that I see people having is when they're generous with with promoting other people's things and sharing other people's pins. So um, you know, you the thing that I always say is is find your audience on Pinterest. Go do some research. Find the people who are pinning the things that have to do with your brand, that have to do with your messaging, that uh, align with the stories that you're trying to tell. Follow those people start sharing what they're sharing because they're they're giving you such valuable information about themselves and what they love and uh, that's where you start and then you start sharing things that are you know similar and and consistent with your brand across the board yeah do you have anybody you would recommend for like let's design or the ones that you boards that you follow on Pinterest I mean we mentioned some of them uh, you know Lisa Meredith's great boards Peg Fitzpatrick Rebecca Radish yours mm -hmm. um, are there other ones that you recommend that you go to kind of for design to get Well I'm a big fan of the Manly Pinterest Tips board uh, there we go <laughs> uh, I'm also a huge fan of Neil Schaefer always shares really great stuff uh, my buddy Wade Harmon shares some really cool stuff on there uh, at Wheel Media you know we try to we, we're trying to amp up our Pinterest uh, traffic but Cynthia Sanchez also huge um, inspiration to me and uh, 
Vincent um, Ng. Vincent Ng. Yeah, I always want to pronounce his last name wrong. Uh, Vincent shares great stuff on there. Um, so those would probably be my top dozen or so. Gotcha. <laughs> well, let's jump in back real quick to the. It's it is actually my favorite plugin for my site because the social warfare plugin, which is awesome. I put a link into it. It is oh, a it is affiliate link for me, so click on it all you want. Um, the uh, it, it is just awesome because it, I used to have to do what you were talking about before. Is I would have my blog is set up. It's a it's a Genesis theme. It has the you know the image the the, the landscape kind of image, and I would have to put that portrait image of my um, pin in the blog post, and it worked. It just didn't look very good. Yeah. So this social plugin is so awesome because. It does it for Facebook. It does it for, I mean, you can go back and put a tweet in. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. it's the best sharing plugin that I've found. And so, um, can you, exp I mean, I just kind of did it a little bit, but can, is there anything I left out what this plugin does that you're really proud of? Well, there's a, there's a lot of things that it does. And it's, a lot of it is behind the scenes because when we were creating it, you know, it was it was myself, it was Nicholas Cardot and Jason Weiser. Now, my myself, uh, you know, starting with me, I, I'm a content creator. I'm a blogger, so I have I'm specifically in tuned to the the needs and wants and desires of a content creator. I also do content creation professionally, so I knew what what that crowd needed, and I, because selfishly, it's what I needed and what I wanted. <laughs> I started with you know answering my own questions and solving my own problems. Now Nick, Nick works for the US Army uh, or um, the reserves, he's in the reserves, but he has a very specific skill set when it comes to uh, psychology and, and psychological warfare in particular. He did a, a great series I, I partnered with him on um, last year about psychological warfare and tying that into marketing and using psychology in your marketing. So he came and brought that expertise of building the, the plugin with psychology and marketing in mind. So a lot of the features that, uh, that we have, uh, you know, we limit the number of social networks. So there's only uh, Google+, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. Uh, people want more, more options, but the true reality is that when you give people more options, they actually choose less. And when you give people less options, they actually act more. And there's tons of study on this. And so the psychology behind it is you give them only the options that really matter to you, right. and they will they will do more of them. Right. Um, the other psychology behind it was displaying the numbers, social proof. Uh, seeing that other people have taken actions on this is a powerful, powerful factor in why we wanted to make sure that you know it shows how many shares there are. Um, you know, on the back end also, like you said, you can declare a Facebook or, or what's called an open graph image that's actually pulled up by Google+, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. And then a separate Pinterest image. Uh, we also have the custom tweet. You can, when someone hits the tweet button, you can craft their tweet for them. Of course, they can always change it. Right. But, you know, for someone like me who spends a lot of time on optimizing the shares because just a headline and a link doesn't work as well as if you were to really pull people in. So right. we give you that ability to customize the tweet, to customize the Pinterest description. Big deal there. I'm sure you know about that. Yeah, and I wanted to give a little hint on that, which I found works really well when you craft that uh, in that uh, description already in, in, the, in the field that lets you do that in the Social Warfare plugin. I go ahead and at mention people in that description. So, oh. what, hap so what happens is, There's when a pro somebody, tip. yeah, when somebody shares that, it automatically, like if I if I am sharing this with uh, this blog post, will have you in it. I'll say something about you know, and Dustin Stout, and I'll at mention your pinch uh, your Pinterest name. So that way, anytime that's pinned, you get notified about it, which that's gives brilliant. me social proof, and it gives you, hey, it was worth being on Jeff's show. And yep. so I've been doing that, and I've been getting really good results with it. So that's a little. You know, it's funny. I do that for for Twitter because I realized I can. You know, we we all know that I never thought to do that for Pinterest. I, yeah. I just never had that thought. So that's brilliant. Thank you for that. Yeah, it works really well. And the, and the the thing about the the Twitter thing is taking the time to go ahead and craft a image, grabbing that link and putting that in there. So also when that is populated, you have populated, you have that 
uh, Twitter image that goes along with your post because those yeah. do get shared a lot more. And since I'm really since I've used this plugin, I mean my um, social shares have jumped up on all platforms. So it's just it's awesome. I can't say enough good things and about do you, it. Do you uh, ever use the click to tweet function, which is sort of a another benefit that we have in the plugin? I do sometimes. I've been kind of playing with the the ways to do it. I really like being able to go in and have an image craft and they put it in that click to tweet thing, and then they, when yeah. they, they yeah, so it's great. Yeah, we've seen a lot of people really getting success with uh, with that click to tweet function. Um, so in in the actual blog post, we we put a uh, an option for you to to make a call to action, a social call to action. You've seen this. Jay Bear does this a lot. Um, Neil Schaefer does this a lot. Uh, Co schedule their their blog and Buffer. They do this a lot. They add like a clickable quote. The, in the middle of the blog post, where you can just click and share it out, and we've we've built that into social warfare as well. I'm seeing a lot of people really loving that. Yeah, here's a question from Rob about the plugin, and I think you can probably answer this. Um, if I need a social warfare for two sites, do I need to buy an individual license? Can I upgrade later when I need to jump to the five site package? Yeah, so just shoot us an email. the The way that our our pricing structure is now is you buy you can buy one license. And uh, for a year, it's a yearly subscription base, uh, or you can buy five licenses for five websites, and or you can get a you know much more. But if you ever need to upgrade, if you ever you know you've you bought one license and say now you want to upgrade to the five, just email us. We'll we'll do what we can for you. Um, we're we're still scrappy and small enough where we can we can do that. So and, yeah, uh, and, and the customer service, yeah, the customer service is great because I've I've. Uh, Emailed them about some issues that I had, and they were right on it, and it was it was awesome. They fixed it, you know, that day. So, um, anyway, we're talking about pinnable images, and that that plugin really is. Once you get that image the way you want it, it is the best way to share it out on uh, the social networks. But uh, I always ask these questions to all my guests, Dustin. And I want to do that before we wrap up because we're getting close to time. Um, when you started using Pinterest, what were some mistakes that you did that we could learn from? And well, wait, I, waiting too long for sure. But. Waiting too long, yeah. That was that was pretty much it. And the other mistake I made was I just started following people, not really knowing, just seeing a few of their pins. I would just follow people, not knowing that they had 175 different boards that they contribute to. Um, so my stream got like overwhelmed with stuff that I had no interest in whatsoever, like you know, dresses and wedding dresses and wedding rings. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to yeah. go. Uh, yeah. So biggest mistake is following people before I knew what kind of boards they maintained. Um, that was huge for me. Um, uh, you know, I also, I, I just didn't spend enough time understanding the culture. I think that was my biggest faux pas, is I, I just didn't spend the time to get to know the people who were active uh, and, and just observe a little bit before I started, you know, wildly pinning anything and everything all over the place. Um, so those two were kind of the, the big deals for me. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so I, that would be probably for me. The it, I was, you know, I usually ask what can guys learn from you know when they first start on Pinterest, and what you just said was you know uh, don't just follow people because you know like if I went and um, followed you know Cynthia Sanchez just blindly, which she's great. I love most all of her stuff, but I really don't want to see. How to braid my hair or nail art or you know <laughs> stuff like that. And not that she does that, but you know that's the, that's a newbie mistake that a lot of people do is they, especially guys, and then they get freaked out because they're getting all this wedding stuff and they don't. Right. You know, I don't. Want or to. you know they're a single guy and then their girlfriend comes over, jumps on their Pinterest, and they see all these wedding dresses and wedding rings, and then they go, oh, Yeah, he's gonna propose. Yeah. Very bad. <laughs> Very bad. So that could be a bad news. Well, we're out of time, but hey, where can we find out uh, more about you and your services, Dustin? Dustin.tv, D-U-S-T-N.tv. There's no I in Dustin because the guy who owns Dustin.tv won't give it to me. Um, so D-U-S-T-N.tv is where you can find me, and that's the best way to reach me. Awesome. Well, as always, we'd love for all you guys to go over to mainlypinteresttips.com, sign up on the uh, and be part of our email community where you'll never miss a great guest like we had today with Dustin. Because at mainlypinterestships.com, we're always adding testosterone one pin at a time. One so we'll pin at a time. That's right. <laughs> we'll see you next time, everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Bye now.